Welcome back to the Skid Factory. We're still working on the Daihatsu Charade Mirror Paradure Cancel Viva. This thing anyway. Got a bit to do still, it hasn't finished itself while I wasn't looking. I've got a bunch of speed flow AN fittings to do the turbo plumbing. Uh, we'll get into that. Um, first of all, apologies for the camera work. Uh, Woody's still not back, I don't know where he's gone. I don't, I don't even where he, know where he went, but it's getting dark and and um, I can hear wolves and stuff, so I hope he's going to be all right. Anyway, let's get into it. Had a bit of a play around yesterday with the core and the oil feeds etc and the drain there's the drain i i needed some angles so i found a mitsubishi diesel turbo in my pile of turbos and it had a really long oil drain with a couple of angles in it so i cut them out and welded them on which is a bit hard to see but you got to be pretty careful with them it's a very thin tube so to be careful when you weld them, but they do weld up okay if you clean them properly. Uh, the bottom one, the bit that goes in the block I've retained, uh, you can't actually see where I've welded it because it's inside the block there, but it's got a sort of an O-ring knurl in the pipe that you need, so that's just another piece welded to it, just with a, sh a little joiner there. Uh, I don't need to put a retainer on the, like a retainer plate on it because it's actually very secure like that, so it's not gonna fall out and it's Probably got an inch of, of pipe inside the block there, so no dramas there. You can see where I've previously cut out a clearance for the compressor. And not painted it, because stupid. Anyway, I'll have to clean all that up and repaint it. Um, I've got the little bracket back on there. That, that bracket is to support the bonnet latch. So without that, the bonnet would probably just fly open because these things are very lightly built. Um, looks like, looks a bit ridiculous but it all fits. Um, bit of a fiddle around to get the um, dump pipe on there but usually just take that bracket off, bolt the dump pipe on, stick it back on again, no dramas. It's a very easy car to work on, it's all sort of in your face. So you can see the water outlets there. I'm actually not going to hook up the water I'm just going to be a mad dog and run it without coolant. Um, it's not a good idea, but I just couldn't be bothered, and it's just a junker anyway. Um, generally speaking, Mitsubishi oil-cooled turbos will run okay without water. It's just an extra precaution, so you can you can get away with it, but I wouldn't recommend it. Do as I say, not as I do, or something like that, something your parents would have said. Uh, so I am going to get on to intercooler fitment now that I've got that all sort of sitting there in the right place. Um, I've had a little fiddle with both intercoolers I've got. They actually, they look the same, but they're slightly different sizes and the smaller one actually works out better. So I'm going to chop it up and add some stuff to it very shortly and try and fit it up. The intercooler Al is using is a 550 by 140 by 65 millimeter eBay item. Al has cut off the two inch outlet and is welding on a 90 degree cast bend. This faces straight towards the outlet of the turbo, making for a very simple path and less silicon bends.
it's all pretty spot on to where I want it. So now I need to pull the turbo back off and put this on permanently. It's just sort of dangling there, so it makes it a bit hard to do anything right. Uh, it's just got a big snap ring inside here. It's a real pain in the butt. The, you know, actually, the bigger ones are actually easier to deal with. These ones are actually really tight because they're so small. But, um, yeah, I'll just pull that core off, leave this here. Put this back together, I've got a mark on it there, how I want it orientated. Uh, snap that back together and then we'll make this work. I'll just use a st standard actuator, most likely, unless it won't fit. And um, then we'll go about mounting the intercooler. There's the oil drain. I'm going to glue that on and put the o-ring back on here. Probably put a bit of glue on that o-ring too, I think, because uh, it's getting a bit old now. So every little bit helps. So we'll do that at the same time. These big snap rings have got a sort of a tapered edge on one side. That's That bit actually goes into, that's at the top, so it sort of helps it to lead in and slide into the compressor and pull it in hard. So you've got to get them around the right way. Uh, if you put it around the wrong way, it'll just make it extremely difficult to do. It's kind of like a bit of a helper. So, you've got to wind it onto here first. Uh, this compressor, they used to have pins in them because it was sort of as an assembly thing. Make it easy for them to um, get it right when they built them in the factory for the WRX that it's off. Uh, when you clock them, you've got to cut them off. That, that, if you're really lucky, that might come out, but I don't have much luck with them, so I just cut them, cut them down. So I've got our pen mark on there for the right spot. If it hasn't rubbed off, there it is. So we'll line them up. Push it down into the O-ring. I've slightly modified these to allow them to fit into the hole properly because these things can be a complete pain in the ass to get in. Sometimes it's a two-man job. Uh, ah, you bastard. Look up frustration in the dictionary and you'll see a picture of me doing this. In insert Benny Hill music. Except for copyright. Oh, almost. Captain Snapring can eat a dick. Almost. Oh wow! Oh. He's gonna have a freaking ball with this. Look at that shit. That hurts. So you're probably thinking one of two things. One might be, how sick is that Aussie boot flag? And the other might be, well, that actuator's gonna hang out the grill like crazy. And you'd be right on both accounts. Um, I just bolted that on because it actually fitted and I was amazed because usually when I'm messing around with shit, I make things hard for myself and nothing fits. But yeah, it's gonna be, look a bit stupid hanging out the front like that. So. I will get a, I've got a heap of aftermarket brackets that'll go straight on there and just make a, make a custom rod and put a different actuator on it. I might put like a 15 pound or something on it. And 
sort of lay it over the opposite way so it's more sort of in here, in there somewhere. And yeah, that'll be the best. Um, but making some progress, that's all good. Might mount the intercooler now. So I've just made one hang bracket for the intercooler. Uh, just used a bit of readily available angle aluminium. You can probably buy that at any Bunnings or Home Depot or steel supply or whatever. Um, does the job, saves you bending it, it's all a bit, bit stronger like that. Uh, I've got to put another one on the other side as well. The, the intercooler is on a little bit of a angle as, it, as in it sweeps inwards uh, towards the outside of the car because the bumper bar is going to curve. It's not in the middle anyway so I don't care about those little aesthetic things at, at, on this vehicle because it's just a nugget. So I'll just make this other bracket. I've got to uh, put nut certs into that um, sort of uh, crossbar radio, uh, bumper support I suppose it is. I'm not even sure what it is. It might be a structural part of the car. Judging by this thing, it's, she's pretty wobbly. Anyway, let's get into it. just planning out my uh, intercooler pipe pathing obviously that one is sorted the cold side's got to go up through under that headlight and there's not much space there so I'm going to go two inch piping which is fine because it's only a little engine up around the battery there over the top of that fuse box and into the throttle body so here's the other thing with the throttle body is it's, this engine originally had a top mounted intercooler that basically covered the top of the engine and it's had a, a sort of a pad mount here. So it's two bolt holes that are offset and an o-ring. So the intercooler sort of just went straight onto there and just got clamped on there and sealed on the o-ring. Um, it's just sort of a bit of a pain in the butt to try and emulate that. I mean I could cut out a plate and sort of shape it and then do things like that to it but that sounds like a lot of work for I think it'd be easier to weld a pipe on, let's just say that. So I'm just in the process of pulling the throttle body off. It's an interesting one as well because it's got a plastic inlet manifold and it also O-ring seals on on the back. So that's sort of an interesting way of doing it. Yes, this is a factory turbo engine and no plastic inlet manifolds don't explode if you put boost into them. That is a complete myth. So I'll pull that throttle body apart and get rid of all the sensors and stuff and then I'm going to weld a 90 degree 2 inch on it um, facing the right direction and that will allow it to connect up to the rest of the piping with ease. Let's just hope that that is not made of some ridiculous material that doesn't like to weld but we'll find out very shortly. While I'm pulling apart this throttle body I thought I'd tell you about some common issues with uh, Toyota, Daihatsu, Subaru uh, idle control motors. You know, they all have a similar sort of Denso setup on them. Um, I'll just throw this thing up on a stand because I can't figure out how to undo things and look through the camera. So this is the idle control motor. It, it's a um, like a frequency type motor with a um, like a valve that swings. First problem is they've got these screws on them, but even if you've got that correct thing to go in that, they are, will not come undone. You can see what I've done is grab them with a pair of side cutters to turn them. That's just how you have to do it. They, unless they've just been undone last week, they won't come undone with a normal whatever that is. So I've got both of those out and we'll pull the motor off and this this is common for engines that have sat and they won't idle properly or they're setting idle control codes or doing crazy stuff so you pull it off and 
this is the little swing valve that controls the idle, the air bypass and it's stuck and that's all it is. This, this doesn't have any contact on it, it's a magnetic type um, valve so it can't actually drive it, it's not like a stepper motor and if that isn't loose and free this cannot, it just can't do it, it's, it's not meant to be able to drive something that's stiff, it's meant to be very very loose, it's got very fine bearings in it and it's just got gunk stuck in it from being sitting around for ages so this is super common on Subaru engines that sit around um, and just about every Toyota engine that doesn't have drive-by wire that isn't ancient, that doesn't have a stepper motor would have this as well um, so you just got to free it up, it's just, it's just stuck so first thing you do is just get it moving doesn't take much and then spray a bit of sort of um, seafoam type cleaner up in the passages and once that's free that'll just work again but it's it's virtually impossible to get them to free up by themselves you've got to pull it apart like this and physically do it you can't even get in there some throttle bodies you can actually see the valve but but the I don't know you, 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 just can't get the movement that you need so once it's freed it'll actually work properly super common for people to just go throw on throttle bodies and all sorts of stuff at cars because it's throwing idle con control codes but that's all it is um, it just can't move it so check that if you've got a problem with an engine that sat around for a bit so I'm going to pull apart all, any, all the electrical stuff I'm just going to take off before I weld it just as a, a precaution um, then we'll put our bend on it and I'll just refit it and we can move on. Got the throttle body welded up, welded really good, so that's a bonus. You never know. Uh, I've also pulled this out, that was a breather from the when this was a on an NA engine they just put like a rubber cap over it and clamp it um, which I don't really trust so I pulled that out and it, it's actually the perfect size to run a, a quarter tap through so I'll just put a plug in it instead so we don't have any problems with things blowing off later on so that's all good to go I'm gonna put all the gear back on it bolt it back on give it a little lube up and then continue on with the intercooler piping Using 2 inch alloy mandrel bends, the cold side intercooler piping is being routed up under the headlight and over the battery. Each end of the pipe is bead rolled where silicon joiners are being used. After the piping is finished, Al welds on a 14 by 1.5mm boss to house the air temperature sensor.
When dealing with custom turbo setups on an internally wastegated turbo, the actuator bracket and rod will sometimes have to be modified. Using parts from the turbo bin, Al finds an actuator rod with the correct bend and welds it to another actuator with a higher spring preload. The boost control solenoid is then fitted up and vacuum line routed to the port on the actuator. I've made a bit of progress. Got the intercooler and everything sorted. Got the wastegate actuator. I've got a, a, a higher spring pressure on that one and it's also tucked in a bit. Still have to cut the grill out. It'll probably just poke through a little bit. But you get that on a little tiny car like this. So that's all fitting pretty well. I've got a bracket on that one underneath there. So it doesn't float around and wear itself out as aluminium pipes can do. This top pipe here is pretty straightforward. Straight across into the modified throttle body. I've got the, the um, air temperature sensor there. I've added a couple of things that weren't put back on, like that little solenoid there for the uh, fuel tank vent canister, charcoal canister. Now I'm going to do the exhaust before I put the front back on it because it'll make it difficult to get at. So I'll grab that flange that I got off Miles and chop it up and get started on that.